Hi. In this video, I'll explain about the practical experiment to measure the thermal conductivity of an unknown material using the Searle's apparatus. So in this image, the unknown material for which the coefficient of thermal conductivity K is to be measured is that cylindrical bar that's jutting out. And on the left hand side, you see a square looking box and that's an empty box through which steam will be passed. So the principle of the experiment is that steam will be passed and the heat given by steam to that material will be absorbed by the water that will flow through tubes and the heat lost by steam will be equated to the heat gained by water and those will be equalized so that the thermal conductivity can be found out. Let's look at an animation and the mechanism of this experiment will become more clear. So you have the steam box on the left hand side, steam comes in from the bottom, uh, goes around that uh, unknown material and then passes out through the top tube. Therefore the cylindrical bar of that unknown material must jut into the steam chamber and I will show you how it juts in. On the right hand side uh, you can see the copper tubes and we will pour in uh, cold water from one end and it will go around that tube and come out through the other tube so the water will absorb that heat and, uh, and to ensure that there is no loss of heat in the middle from the left hand side to the right hand side we have to cover the whole thing in insulation and the insulation has to be over the copper tubes as well and you can see the insulation in the image it could be wool, felt, cotton or similar uh, good insulating material. So the water flow is important and when the water flows out through the outlet it has to be collected in a beaker so the mass of water is very important because it's the mass of water which is absorbing the heat from the material. Now let's look at a still image of the initial conditions before anything happens. So the bar is jutting into the steam chamber, that's fine, and everything is cold. So the temperatures T1 and T2 of those two thermometers at the steam end are the same. The temperatures of water uh, T3 and T4 of those uh, two thermometers are also the same because water is not absorbing any heat. The distance between the two thermometers on the steam side is given as X between T1 and T2. That X is very important because the heat current or the thermal current which flows delta Q by delta T is inversely proportional to X. So that X has been mentioned out there. Now the final conditions are that as the steam is passing through the rod for a sufficient amount of time, time duration T, and the water is also flowing through those tubes, all the thermometers attain a steady state. Steady state means that the thermometers uh, are not showing different temperatures. So T1 has stabilized, temperature T2 has stabilized, temperature T3 and T4 have also stabilized after some time. So at this time, you can see that the temperatures T1 and T2 have both risen, but still T1 is greater than T2. The temperature T3 has risen, but T3 is greater than T4. So that's very important to find out the, uh, uh, the delta temperatures. To find the mass of the water, one could uh, initially measure the empty beaker and then measure the beaker with water after a time duration, and that difference will give you the mass of water which flowed. So now let's come to the equations itself. We start with the steam side to be very simple and we plug in the equation delta Q by delta T which is the uh, thermal energy current equal to Ka into delta temperature by X. And this X is the same X as in the image. So with this we have to understand that the delta temperature on the steam side is T1 minus T2. So the rod was heat hotter on the steam side and becomes colder as we go towards the right. Therefore, T1 minus T2 is positive. Now, we come to the water side. The water absorbed that heat because we insulated everything and we more or less uh, ensured that there is no heat lost to the environment. So, delta Q is mass into specific heat into increase in temperature. Increase in temperature of the water is T3 minus T4. So, with this, we have a good handle on the heat absorbed by the water. The next step is clearly to equate the heat given by steam to the material with the heat energy absorbed by the water from the material.
in order to equate the heat lost with the heat gained we must make sure that both the quantities on the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation are delta q's but on the steam side we had delta q by delta time so that delta time thing in the denominator has to be moved across to the other side which is shown here once we do that then the heat lost by steam remains delta Q, the heat gained by water on the right hand side of the equation remains delta Q, then we are able to equate them. And after that it's possible to get K as shown. I personally think it's easier to derive this than to try to remember it. I hope this video was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.